not so bad in the end. Hi everyone, my name is Mariah, and in August, I applied for the Disney College program. To my surprise, came September, and I was accepted. Now, January 14th, I begin my spring program. So, I am making this video to give you guys some tips, tricks, and hints for your application process. Um, I was accepted for front desk. And there is not a lot of information for front desk, unfortunately. And when I was searching for information, I realized that there was really little to none on the internet. So I, um, I'm going to be starting to vlog a little bit more and just talk about my application process, my experience, and what it's like to be a DCP front desk person. Um, so to begin, I'm going to talk a little bit about the application, which is the first step. And uh, the number one thing that you want to do in your application is definitely keep it short. You don't want to have these long, long resumes that are, you know, detailed and overly descriptive of your job responsibilities because, yes, it does go through a computer system, but they're not going to take their time to go sit through pages of a resume. I took all of my work experience that I had on the application and I put it into a Word document and then I started listing all of my responsibilities, all my job descriptions in detail, and uh, it came out to be like five pages. So that was a lot. And a lot of people that I sent my resume to to look over all told me that it needed to be shorter. There was one girl uh, who's a YouTuber, her name is Megan Lemo. I decided to email her my resume and when she went through it um, and sent it back to me, it was one page. So I freaked out a little bit. And she said to me, you know, don't worry, don't freak out. Um, you know, I know it looks scary, but this is what it should be. Um, instead of having every single responsibility listed in detail, I had maybe four or five of my main responsibilities listed. And then I had like a sentence to describe each responsibility. Um, you know, you, you can do more if you had that many responsibilities in a job, especially if it was only um, maybe like, you know, you only have two job experiences. Uh, the max that you can put on there is five, so I had uh, Starbucks, which I've been working at since I was 16. Um, I'm going to be 21 in February. Ooh, ooh. Um, the other one I had on there was night hosting, which is kind of like an RA job. And then I also did catering, like party catering and serving for a little bit over the summer. And then two of my volunteer experiences were the uh, theater department. Uh, experience that I have because on my uh, school's campus we have a theater club and I just you know I'm always there always you know getting involved and then my other one was a frozen summer music camp and it was just a lot of like you know children's stuff and children's activities um, but again I was able to use that as my experience any kind of experience you have that's going to be closely related to the roles that you want definitely list that um, and if you want to list all your experience, go ahead. doesn't matter if it's all volunteer, all paid, or a combination of both. Whatever you have is fine. Um, so anyways, just list all of your experience. Whatever you have, great. Um, stuff that's very similar to what you want to get as a role. Um, and then another thing is looking at the job descriptions. When you're writing out your application, definitely go on the DCP website and look at the roles. And uh, a little link that says explore roles and it's going to take you to a page where you can click on all the different roles and it will list all the responsibilities of that role. So I wanted front desk, so I made sure that I looked at things like the front desk responsibilities. I also looked at vacation planner. That was another one of my high interest roles. I also looked at convention guide. That was another one of my high interest roles. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely go on the DCP website, look at the job descriptions, and use those words and phrases, um, not word for word, you don't want to plagiarize, but definitely use those words and phrases in your own words, and um, use it to describe your job responsibilities, especially if those are the jobs you want. I, I think I clicked on almost all of them, just so I wasn't missing anything. Um, there are a couple keywords that you want to use on your application. There's four of them. They are safety, security, courtesy, and efficiency. You got to use those four words anywhere in your application that you can. So having those four words in there, they're kind of like your keywords. You know, those kind of words will pull your application from the pool quicker than everyone else's. Um, other words that you definitely want to use, Disney calls them their guests be our guest 
Uh, they don't really refer to them as clients or customers. So if it's customer service, for Disney it's guest service. Um, if you used to work in any kind of attraction, park, or, you know, place like that, amusement park, refer to them as attractions. That's what Disney calls them, so that's what you're going to call them. Um, you know, kind of just be familiar with the Disney lingo, and again, looking at those job responsibilities are going to get you familiarized with the Disney language, so you know what kind of words and phrasing to put on your application that are going to help you move along quicker than everyone else. Um, that is all I have. Uh, I said to keep it clear, concise, and concrete. And, um, again, any job experience that's similar to what you want to get as your role, list that. Doesn't matter if it's paid or not. List it. Um, that's all I have for the application. So, the next thing I want to talk about is the web-based interview. And, um, I know that that's really scary for a lot of people. I was actually a little freaked out by that, too, because I didn't want to just take an online test and then fail because I, I hate taking tests. So I was freaking out over, like, you know, about this web-based interview because I thought, oh my god, like, I'm going to have to take a quiz. But what? I don't want to do that. That's what? Be calm. Don't stress. And to just really be yourself and take your time. Uh, and answer truthfully. You know, you really can't get through that by lying, and you do have to pay attention to the questions. So take your time. Think about the question that's being asked. Think about what they're asking you, how they're asking you, um, and, you know, you can take your time to think about your answer. They are time questions, though. I believe it's like 40 to 60 seconds per question, something like that. I'm not exactly sure the number. Um, but yeah, take your time. It doesn't sound like a lot of time, but you do have time to answer each question. Definitely give yourself enough time to take the test. You don't want to be rushing through it and miss things. I blocked out maybe like an hour or two because I, you know, didn't know when I was going to start it or, you know, whatever. So I took it in about 40 minutes, which is about average for most people. You know, whatever, however long you have to take it. Um, you know, just take it, but make sure you have enough time, you know, give yourself time to take it so you're not going through it freaking out, um, about whether or not you're going to finish it in time, um, you know, but you, you will finish. You will be fine. Um, another thing I did for the web-based interview was I looked up practice, uh, web-based interviews, and no one had recommended this, so I wasn't sure if this was a good idea or not, but I don't like to go into things blindsided, and I figured if I don't have to go into this blindsided, then why should I? So I looked up just generic web-based interviews, and they all kind of ask the same questions, like, you know, being on time, your work ethic, you know, um, for Disney they do ask you questions regarding, like, you know, living and housing type situation stuff, um, but, you know, more of like, you know, how you work with others, how you work with, you know, your guests, uh, how you, you know, um, are as a worker just in general, and I think maybe like three questions that I saw on practice ones did show up on the Disney ones, um, and some of the questions that are on there, and uh, this is a big example that everyone uses. I am always, almost, never late. There you go. Um, yeah, so the reason why everyone uses that as an example is because the question kind of tricks you a little bit. Now, Disney's not trying to trick you, but they are trying to weed out the people who are not being genuine and who are not being truthful because, you know, who wants people to work at their company if they're not genuine and truthful? So, question. I, well, statement, um, I am always almost never late. Now, when you read that at first, you're like, um, always almost never late. Uh, yeah, okay, I agree, yeah. You know, sometimes it might be that 1% time where, you know, my car doesn't start, or, you know, something happens and I'm a couple minutes late. No, there's no 1% when you're doing the DCP. You are always on time. Um, but a way to help you figure out questions like these when they throw in those tricky words to try to mess you up, just take the words out of the sentence. Um, so when I was reading questions like that, I think I did get asked this question. Um, I am always almost never late. I just took out the word almost. So the question became, I am always never late. Strongly agree. I'm always never late. You don't want to be late. So, um, when you're reading those questions... Pay attention to those words that are tripping you up. Um, just, you know, really think about what they're asking you and take your time. When you're answering these questions, just do strongly agree or strongly disagree. You really don't have a reason to do agree or disagree because they're both kind of the same thing. And, um, you know, they say not to use neutral as much. I think I put neutral in my uh, WBI maybe like three or four times. Um... Obviously, that didn't hurt me. I think they ask you about, like, 
they have 40 to 50 questions or something. But out of all those questions, I only put it like maybe three or four times. It was fine. Um, but, you know, when you're, you know, doing the web based interview, try and treat it like a real interview. Because, you know, if the interviewer asks you, are you always almost never late? You're going to say, yeah. And, you know, you're not going to say, oh, you know, I'm, I'm always almost never late. Because, you know, there, there's that, like, slight chance that something might happen. Like, you're not going to say that to an interviewer in, in person. So don't say it on the web-based interview. Um, you know, when you're answering the questions, strongly agree, strongly disagree. Just he wants to see that you're opinionated, that you're dominant and strong in your opinions. Not, you know, people who are wishy-washy who are kind of like, oh, yeah, well, I don't know. You have to be able to be very confident in your answers, be very confident in just yourself, and, you know, strongly agree, strongly disagree. That's it. That's all I got for you. Um, you know, look up practice ones if that will help you and help me. Uh, um, you know, definitely, you know, try to steer clear of agree, disagree. Other sections of the WBI, um, the answers are a little bit different. They don't have strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, strongly disagree for every single question that they ask you. The other ones are kind of like, very like me, like me, neutral, not like me, not like me at all, um, you know, stuff like that. So kind of that same five question, five answer scale of very to, you know, very this to very that. Um, but yeah, other than that, just take your time, stay calm, uh, be positive, and just, you know, pay attention and focus. Um, that's all I have for the web-based interview. For the phone interview! Yay! This is everyone's favorite part! Yay! Um, at least this was my favorite part. I like the phone interview because I like to talk. Um, that's why I'm making this video. <laughs> um... But, yeah, the phone interview is kind of fun, actually. I like to talk to the recruiters. They were really, really nice. So, when you had your phone interview, the first thing you want to do is definitely give yourself some time beforehand to relax a little bit. Because, um, my interview was at 6.30 at night. And they say that they can call you either 15 minutes before or 15 minutes after the scheduled interview time. So, I was sitting by my phone at 6. And I was freaking out. At 6.15, I'm like, oh my god, they didn't call yet. Then I was like, wait, my interview time is not till 6.30. 6.30 came, and I was freaking out because I'm like, oh my god, they didn't call yet. And then I was like, wait, I have another 15 minutes, and then they call. 6.45 rolls around, and then they finally call. So I was like, oh, here we go, finally. Um, I'm not going to go into detail on the kind of questions that they do ask because it does differ from role to role depending on what you put as high interest, how many things you put as high interest, and um, yeah, that's really it. Uh, but they do ask... Sorry. They do ask you a couple of generic questions, like, why do you want to do the Disney College program? What kind of experience do you think you're going to gain from doing the college program? What are you most looking forward to? Um, stuff like that. Um, they might ask you a question about a time that you had to deal with a difficult coworker or guest and how you solved that situation. Um just because that is a likely scenario in really almost any role that you get. So definitely think of an answer for that. Um, be prepared. I wrote down a bunch of different questions that I f um, figured and thought that they would ask me. Just so I was prepared, they asked me a question for each role that I had high interest in. And again, those roles were vacation planner, front desk, custodial, costume, and convention guy. Um, and my role was front desk. The question that they asked me for front desk was if a family comes and checks into a resort and the room that they always stay in is not available for use, how are you going to solve this problem? So um, they will ask you questions about the roles that you're interested in. So make sure that you just do your research on the roles responsibilities again and um, you know, maybe read a couple of blogs, look at a couple of YouTube videos, vlogs about uh, roles, responsibilities that you're interested in um, so you know uh, what kind of questions they might ask you or what kind of scenarios that you might run into so you can think of, oh, if I'm in that position, what should I do? Oh, that's what I could do. Good, I'm glad I saw that. Um, one thing I'm going to say not to do, do not watch other people's YouTube videos of their phone interviews because... That is not for you to be there. You know, that's not for public information. Some people do put them on YouTube. They're allowed to do that. They're allowed to do whatever they want. Um, but you don't want to use other people's answers. And I think that that is definitely something to be weary of. If you do want to go check out those videos, go right ahead. But do not 
copy down those person's answers. You know, there's really no reason that you can't, you know, think of your own answers and come up with your own responses on your own because you definitely can do it. It's really not as, you know, hard and scary as everyone says. But again, if you think of watching that video is going to help you, then definitely go for it. Just do not copy people's answers. Those answers should come from you. My interviewer's name, his name was Will, and the reason I know that and remember that is because I wrote it down in my book. And definitely something that you want to do when you are on the phone with your interviewer is if they don't tell you their name, ask them what their name is. And make sure you use it throughout the phone interview. And you can use it in multiple different ways. Some of the ways that I used it well, Will, that's actually a great question. I'm very glad you asked me that. Or, I'm very glad you asked me that question, Will. Or, Will, do you mind if it take a second to think about my answer? And that way you are not only showing that you're being personable and remembering the person's name, but you're also engaging a little bit more in the conversation, and you're also giving yourself some time to think and process the question that you just heard. So you don't have to worry about answering right away and stumbling over your words. Um, you know, those little sentence fillers are great, and you know, definitely, definitely use them. Anytime you can use your interviewer's name, definitely use it because they do like that. And Disney wants to see that in the phone interview so that they know that when they're in a guest situation, they'll remember guest names and they'll use the guest names when they're speaking with them. So definitely, definitely write down their name, remember it, um, highlight it, star it, do whatever you have to do. Just make sure that you're conscious of that and you use the name. Um, other things for the phone interview? I really don't have much. Again, if you want me to go a little bit more into detail of the kind of questions that they do ask, let me know and I will definitely make a longer video about that. I have um, a question for each of the high interest roles that I put plus some generic questions. Um, but yeah, if you have any other questions, comments, concerns, funny jokes, ideas, epiphanies, uh, whatever, whatever you got, uh, leave it right down here. And I will read them, I will respond to them, I will leave my contact info if you guys want to DM me or email me or anything like that. I will also leave other YouTubers um, and other vloggers who I have watched that were very, very, very helpful. Um, so you can follow along with what they have to say because, I mean, I, I am still at the very, very beginning. I haven't even started my program yet, but I am so, so very excited. Um, and I guess, you know, one last thing that I want to say about just the overall application okay. process is just, you know, be confident and believe in yourself. It's kind of hard to, you know, keep the faith when you still haven't gotten that email, but it will come and you are going to get accepted. You know, do your homework, do your research, uh, trust yourself that you know the information and believe in yourself. You know, Walt Disney failed over and over again before he finally made it to Hollywood. But yeah, believe in yourself. He did it and look at the legacy they created. So, if anyone has any questions or anything, please, please, please let me know. Like, subscribe, do whatever you guys want. Have a wonderful, wonderful um, November's ending. So have a great December if I don't talk to you guys then. Bye!